If there's something I have done wrong in the past 12 months is I have abandoned my Facebook group. Facebook is putting so much attention and focus and support to this feature at this moment and in future months and maybe even years. So you want to be setting up your foundation right now. So what I'm starting right now is series of trainings for Facebook groups to start how to set it up for more exposure and more conversion. That's today's training and more in upcoming series. Our goal is to grow very engaged community and your business. And what I highly recommend is actually, unless you have a business page that you are focusing on and you run advertising budget and you know what you're doing as far as fan pages, if you're using for your business, your personal profile, what I recommend is transform those people to your Facebook group and use that to grow your business. And how to do that, I'm gonna show you in this series. So in this video, let me show you how to set up your group, whether you have a new one, you're gonna be creating one, or you already have an existing group for more exposure and conversion for your business. First thing first, your name of the group. What is recommended is actually use some kind of general name because when people are searching for anything on Facebook, your group may show up and they don't search with your name. They search with something in general, some kind of interest, some kind of problem, something they actually want to look up on Facebook. That way, when you have that keyword in that name and you can experiment, however, be careful because you can change the name of your group only once a month, but you can experiment. I recommend you actually change that name every month because every time that person gets a notification about your group. So if that person is not engaged, they get the notification from your group that you have changed the name and they can look what's new in your group. Second thing, what I would put in there is your name, your brand, maybe your hashtag something that people something that will brand you and people know you by so they know it's yours if you like your name and you actually do want to change it you can just use emojis and change that emoji up every single month that way still people get notified and you have that core name the same way that you had before something that people are used to something you really like and that works that has good statistics and more people are coming in so you may use hashtags second thing that you want to be looking at is location and i would actually put more locations in this setting. The reason for that is people may be searching in different locations. They are targeting specific audience. Let's say affiliate or network marketing, if you want to be in that niche or go very specific on healthy lifestyle, weight loss, parenting, fitness, makeup, beauty, whatever that you want to have in that title, you can put there US, Canada, Asia, Australia, locations that you want to really be targeting or even cities, big cities that you want to be focusing on where you want to build team and expand. The same way I would work with tagging. That way, Facebook knows what to associate your group with when people are actually searching for something what will be the suggested group that Facebook will recommend to those people. So play with tags, mix it up and see what's working for you. When people do join your group, what they see is either units or discussion. Those are the pages they can land at. The discussion is the general feed, what's happening in the group as far as the posts units is more of a membership site we're going to focus on units i'm creating my units for you right now in my group as well the link to that is below in the comments 
and I'm starting with the unit about the Facebook groups and I'm going to be adding more about Facebook strategies, Instagram strategies, how to build YouTube channel, not only on social media, but also personal branding and affiliate and network marketing strategies. So we're going to expand that and I'm going to create, and that's what you should do for your audience as well, something as a membership site you can use those facebook groups right now something as free membership for people that want to follow you that want to learn about the topic that the group is about and in the future what facebook talks about a lot is actually paid membership facebook group that way people can right now when you have paid membership you actually have to pay on different platform to become part of that Facebook group as a paid member. But Facebook wants to have that paying platform inside Facebook groups. So you can have, that's why the foundation right now is so important. So you have the community that you can pick those people that want to know more and go more in depth and are serious about that topic to that paid membership site that Facebook is gonna probably launch pretty soon because it's a very discussed topic. So you need to work more as a membership site. You have specific sections where you can easily group the resources for those people. And there's actually a category for that in that group called social learning. So in your setup, uh, what I do, I have people lend on the discussion, on the feed, on the posts. And if they're interested in learning more, they always, always have the units that they can click to and learn from there. Other features of the setup, you can link your Facebook page if you have one. It really works good, the connections between those two. You can promote your page and from your page, the content that you create in your group you actually get notified the followers of your Facebook page, get notified that you've added something to the group as a page. You can support it in that way. If you already have existing Facebook page for businesses, you can support your group that way as well. And you can connect those two. You can choose a color. You don't have to have the Facebook's blue. Another thing that I would definitely look at is address of the group. And you want to make sure that, again, it's probably the branded or something using that keyword that you have chosen for your niche that you have in that title of the group. It's easier to find. It's always facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the name that you have chosen. It's easier. It looks good. It doesn't have all the signs and numbers inside that address. So it's easier to look at. And when you're actually sharing the address of the group, mine at this moment is Grow with Lanka as my website. So I'm keeping it all the same. The privacy of your group that actually depends on you. I wouldn't choose to go public one because people don't have reason really to join. They can see the posts, they can look what's happening in the group and they don't have to join it. Choose at least closed group because that way they have to actually request access to the group to see what's inside. And if the group is private, people cannot look it up actually. They have to know what the address is. Maybe if you're doing some kind of challenges or something that is for closed group of people, then I would choose private. But closed groups are great. They work just fine. Another thing you can find in your settings are badges. Badges work really good because it helps the community to get engaged. You can, when you welcome new member, get a badge for new member that lasts for two weeks. When they post, comment, people can see it's new member. It gets them a little bit more exposure. It creates some kind of status for that person. If they're a rising star or they are highly engaged person, you can reward them by giving them that budget. You can also highlight that person up. For those that engage the most in your group, you can also have some kind of reward, uh, not only the badges, but also 
access to some kind of freebie that no one else or maybe even paid product that you might have if you have a digital product or some kind of samples depending on what type of group it is if it's product based group then you can have samples for the most engaged people in that group that, that all depends on you and the type of the group that you have created a little bit technical setup as far as approval all the posts new members i would control that you don't want to become one of those spamming groups that no one wants to really be part of or they're tired of looking at and they don't want to see new posts so make sure that you control the content and what's happening in the group and the way to do that you can allow people to post just it has to have your approval before pe other people can see it the same with new members i wouldn't allow other people to actually approve new members be the one who is doing that and set up questions so this video i'm gonna link a video that i have done about the questions for your facebook groups that will tell you more about that person why they want to join what do they expect why they actually sending the request what they want to see it helps to get to know them a little bit more as far as maybe their goals and how you can help that person you can immediately connect so link to that video will be below this one as far as the category i would really go through them depending on what type of group you want to build and play with it. You can change it up and create new things for your community, test it out, see what people engage with, what they do not like, what they do like, and do it for them what they request because that will help you to really grow that engagement and the tribe that you really want to build in that group because that will help your brand and your business to grow as well. So this is your setup for more exposure and conversion in the group. If you have any more questions about what to do when setting up your group, maybe questions about the cover photo, how to use it better, anything that you would like to know as far as setting your Facebook group up in order to get better exposure. We're going to cover a lot of it in upcoming videos, but if you have any specific questions, something maybe that I haven't planned out yet, I may be adding that to future videos. So ask all the questions that you have, some kind of tips that you would like to hear about below in the comments, and I'm looking forward to talking to you in the next video.